Almost gone. Got four more left. Well, here we are again. As you can see, pulled in the uh, 2001 Silverado. Do a little uh, little backstory on this truck. Some of you may recognize it if you've been keeping track and following along throughout the years. So this truck I acquired in May of 2014. We live here, we recording. Oh yeah, we're on. Alright, so I remember I was wheeling and dealing quite a bit, as I always did. Um if I remember correctly, I, I might have sold one or two vehicles that I had, and uh, I went to the swap meet, you know, looking at the car corral, and uh, hoping to uh, spend the money that was burning the hole in my pocket, but couldn't really find too much, so ended up coming home, and... Um, good friend of mine he called me up and he said hey I'm not sure if you're really you know would be interested I know it's really not your thing but my uh, my girlfriend's mother has this uh, Chevy Silverado and um, so the story goes uh, she bought the truck brand new right off the lot and she drove it for many years, loved it, you know, took care of it, did all the maintenance on it, you know, like you do. And, uh, you know, it was getting to that point where, you know, the dealership was probably calling her with, you know, deals and, you know, uh, come in now, trade in your truck and get a brand new one. So she decided it was time. She wanted a brand new Silverado. So... She took a ride in with the uh, D01. Took a ride into the dealership and said, uh, I want to trade my truck in and I want that brand new one over there. So they came back and said, We'll give you $500 trade in for your truck. And she laughed. 500 bucks no and she told them that her actually were her actual words were I will park this in my front yard and wash it and look at it for 500 bucks so you're not getting it so she turned around and she bought the new truck and she said bring it home for me because I'm driving my old truck home you ain't getting it they try to talk her out of it, of course, because, you know, they want to, you know, it ends up being free to them because they just work it out in the numbers. You don't actually get the trade in. But anyway, she brought the truck home. So my friend calls me and says, you know, she's got this truck. She hasn't advertised it or anything, but this is the story behind it. And, um... She wants $1,500 for this truck. Uh, the, the AC works ice cold. It actually, at the time, it did. It was working, and then uh, it needed a um, condenser. And he said, I, "I, if you buy it, I'll put the condenser in. No problem. I'll, you know, we could charge the AC, and you'll be all set." So I said, "Man, I don't really." What do I want in 2001? You know, I was into the older stuff. And, uh... I 
didn't really um, didn't really know much about the newer LS motor trucks and stuff like that. Really didn't pay much attention to it. But I took a ride over and checked it out. And I took this thing for a ride around the block and I mean to me it was like a brand new truck. And uh, you know at the time there was just a small bit of rust peeking through on the rocker panel. Nothing much else. Um, didn't really need anything. The tires were getting a little bit old, but had some BF Goodriches on it that were getting a little bit, a little bit weather cracked. But um, I mean, I was like, you know what, 1,500 bucks. Even if I drive it for a month, I could turn around and you could sell this truck for, you know, three, four grand. So um, it had, I believe. It had around 180,000 on it, somewhere around there. Which you know, you know, if you know anything about these, that's nothing. So I threw the money at him. I said, "Here's my 1,500." I said, "You know," he said, "I'll bring it after I clean our stuff out. You know, I'll bring it over for you." So brought it home, and there you go. I got a, a one Silverado sitting in the driveway. So, I put it on the road, registered it, you know, insured it and everything, and uh, we got the AC working in it, and I mean, it was like the best summer I've ever had. I mean, driving around in this thing, um, I towed my car trailer with it, uh, I towed many, many cars with it, um, it's only got a little bed, which kind of sucks, you know, it's only like that six, six and a half foot bed or something, but... I filled it with scrap. There's many pictures. Um, you go on Facebook, you can see them. But um, just a real great truck. Um, not really sure how many years I drove it for. Actually, is my truck. Um, but it was just uh, like luxury to have it. You know, with the with the nice interior and the AC there really is something to be said I like the old trucks I like riding around in them I like the rattles you know I'm weird like that um, but when you get in something like this it it spoils you you know it definitely does and I mean this is a you know this is a 2001 I mean this is an old truck you know pretty much and uh, it's still like the new vehicle in the driveway. Um, so anyway, I was driving it and then I met um, who now is my wife and we started um, seeing each other and she moved into my place and uh, she was driving um, a shitty uh, Chrysler LeBaron which is probably not even any more of those on the road. You know, a little front wheel drive thing. Uh, the transmission ended up going in that. Um, so I, I got rid of that and I got her a uh, 94 Lincoln Town Car that I thought was, you know, it was cheap. It was like 800 bucks. Maybe six, uh, six or 800 bucks. And uh, it was black. It was a decent car. Had you know it was luxury everything in it had the four six rear wheel drive and um, the thing was when it got to be winter time she didn't like it because uh, you know being rear wheel drive I mean that's fun to me or you um, maybe maybe you it's fun to you I don't know but to drive that in the snow it's you know that that's fun to me but to her it was she couldn't control it you know she didn't like it getting stuck and spinning out around the corners and such so um yeah I, I think I just said and such just almost said it but um so she ended up um getting a pretty decent tax return she had some cash and she said you know I said you know, we got to get you a, um, a vehicle that, you know, is more fitting. And 
she said, I want that truck, you know. She said, it could still be, you know, it's still going to be here. You could still use it whenever you want. But she said, you know, I want that truck to drive as my own, to go back and forth to work in and stuff like that. So I ended up, um, she made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And uh, we ended up switching out and trading and uh, some cash and, and the Lincoln. I ended up with that Lincoln. And so I started driving that Lincoln back and forth to work, and I was having fun in that thing. I mean, it was a nice car. The heat worked good. And, um, but one day, all the brake lines blew out in it. Uh, I was driving to work, and I lost everything. I mean, there was no brakes at all. Uh, I looked underneath of it, and it was just so rotted underneath like a lot of them are. So I ended up parking that. I, I drove it home, actually, with no brakes through traffic, morning, you know, work traffic. Somehow made it home, crashed it into the snowbank at my house, and uh, that was it. Let it sit there until I was ready to scrap it. So, obviously she loved the truck. Um, and ever since then, you know, it's been around, and it's been a great truck. Um, you know, things along the way, uh, the fuel pump went, um, that was a little bit of a job, had to drop the tank and change that out. Um, I think we're still, we gotta make sure that thing, sometimes it stops at like, I don't know, random times it will just stop recording, so I gotta make sure, but, um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, she was driving at one time, big loud fucking bang, and didn't know what it was, and she told me about it, and it was about a week went by, and finally I said, truck's sitting a little bit cockeyed, and it turned out to be, you know, the rear leaf spring shackle broke, rotted, and shot the spring right through the bed, put a hole right in it. Um, so, I got two brand new shackles for it, put those on, um, you know. Little things, uh, nothing too crazy. I actually pulled it in today because, um, I don't know if you can see behind me, the chrome mirrors, you know, uh, she had she had a couple of mishaps where she kept catching the mirrors on, uh, on tree branches and telephone poles or something, I don't know. But she kept breaking them, and they were the power ones, you know, expensive chrome with the power and, uh, so I ended up um, finally just swapping them out for a couple of work truck mirrors that were just black and uh, no, you know, no power, no nothing, just straight bare bones ones. And uh, to kind of, you know, teach her a lesson. It was kind of a joke for years, but um, needless to say, I've never heard the end of it. And uh, <clears throat> she always said I gotta get those chrome mirrors you know we gotta get those chrome mirrors back on so I ended up uh, I had a passenger side that uh, I got off a truck years ago and put it in stock and I actually forgot about it and recently found it. So I said, well, I went to a, a junkyard I found that's like a you pull it yourself kind of place. And I was looking around and I found a driver's side and they only wanted uh, $27 for a mirror. So um, I found one good one, grabbed it. So today she got her chrome mirrors back and uh, Checking out a couple other things on the truck while it's in here. I've had a real problem with starters on it. Um, the starter went one day, uh, probably a year ago or so, and uh, cardio. Um, So I got, you know, a, a new starter for one of these, pretty expensive, uh, you know, between two and three hundred dollars, 
So I ended up going the cheap way and getting an Amazon one, and it made a funny noise every time you started it. Left it in there for a while, and um, I think it may have uh, it may have done something to the flywheel at this point. I'm not sure, but anyway, I just changed uh, the starter for the fourth or fifth time. Uh, I ended up taking the Amazon one out and then putting in a. Uh, tried another one off there. Did the same thing. But every, well, every single time it made like a different noise. But um, I ended up getting one from a guy, just gave it to me pretty much. Uh, that was out of a truck that was, you know, truck that was starting every day. It just brought it out and kept the starter. I threw that in, and that made a different noise, like a little, when you started it, like a little wing, like when it started. So. There's no shims that go in these starters, you know, or anything like that. It shouldn't be, you know, like the older ones. But, uh, so I said, well, I found a company on eBay that makes them, and uh, they're brand new. They're like 60 bucks, and everyone was buying them. There was a lot of them sold. The reviews were good. I really researched it, and I said, you know what, I'm going to try this for 60 and I'm going to put this one in. If it still makes a noise, then something's going on with that. You know, technically, the flex plate, you know, they call it for an automatic. But um, something's got to be screwed up on the gears on that. But uh, I put that brand new one in just now. It still makes a little tiny, just after, just before it actually fires, it you know, just a little little wing, and uh, that's gonna have to be like that because I don't know what else to do on that. But the truck uh, it's currently got 242,000 miles on it, so we've put quite a few miles. Um, this truck, when we moved, it took us a month because we didn't want to spend the money on a moving truck and stuff and um, so we ended up using this truck and my trailer and uh, we drove six six and a half hours every weekend with a load of stuff and um, this truck you know made a lot of trips back and forth um, no problems whatsoever you know every every now and then you know, you, you check the antifreeze, it's just a little bit low. Don't know where it's going. It's one of those things, I don't know. It's not leaking, it's not, you know, anywhere, so I don't pay no attention. I just add it, fill it up. Um, oil, it was using oil, but then I, I changed it, you know, all the time, and I put the good stuff in. I did a motor flush on it, and uh, I put some marble mystery oil in it, and um, I cleaned it right out. And the reason why I did that brings me to um, when I started taking junk cars down to that other place that's kind of a ride, I was using this because it made the most sense, right? You get on, you know, it was a nice, comfortable ride. Uh, it used a fraction of the gas that the dually would use or the farm truck. Um, it was just easy. And plus, what we would do is I would have a car to go in a junk car and she would come with me and we would take a ride down cash that in and then we would stop and get supplies at you know in at all the stores down there that we don't have up here so it kind of worked out and uh, you know throw the dog in the back you know and stuff and you know make a day out of it and uh, she could be comfortable in her truck and everything like that um, so that was working out but what started to happen was every time we would use it to tow a car the next day you'd start it up and it just was not happy it was ticking real loud real loud ticking in the top end of the engine um, so 
she finally said, you know, we both kind of agreed. You know, she said, maybe we shouldn't tow cars with this anymore, you know, to keep it alive. And I kind of agreed. I said, yeah, you know, it's probably a good idea. But it's got the good old 5.3. And uh, so, yeah, I did that um, motor flush and I got a lot of gunk out of it. Um, I mean, it wouldn't even pour out of the drain bucket. It was it was so thick, all the shit that was built up in there. Um, and after the new, these like to have thin oil in them. I learned, and uh, I put a AC Delco filter, put some nice oil, put half a quart of Marvel in there, and it's been it's been pretty quiet. Um, of course, it's always done that low end, you know, little five three almost like a knock when it's cold but it's done that since the lady said that you know it did that for her at, you know probably a hundred thousand miles or so maybe even less but um that's where it's at with that and uh you know at this point man that Miller Lite's awful you're still there. Yep. Yeah, you're still watching. Um, years ago, it, we were getting a, a weird vibration and a little noise out of the front end. Couldn't figure it out. I kept bringing it to work, putting it up on the lift a hundred times. finally um, came to the conclusion that where the front axle goes into the differential was wobbly and uh, so there's a bearing right there that goes bad and the lady the original owner when she drove this if there was a flake of snow um, she pressed four-wheel drive and she got right on the interstate and went to work about an hour ride every morning and uh, if there was any snow it was in four-wheel drive so I th I thought that's might have that might have been you know what caused that anyway but so instead of trying to take it all apart and replace that bearing which would have been a nightmare from what I was told and you know what's the rest of the differential you know in for shape like what's going on in there so I ended up just getting a whole differential delivered from the junkyard it's like a buck and a half I think and uh, at the time I was I you know I had a nine to five and uh, so I was busy so I just paid a guy to put it in I think he charged me 100 150 bucks or something slap it in and uh, it was great I mean it was like right back to a brand new truck and uh, that solved that but we are um, we're at the point years later and a ton of miles that um, it started doing that again and uh, I ended up if you remember a big Ford van I scrapped um, an E350 church van like a big bus um, cat was worth seven hundred dollars on that van by the way um, but that had brand new uh, load range D 245 75 16s on it a little bit smaller but I paid an extra hundred for the van because I wanted the tires to put on this because the tires were getting kind of bad and they're a little mismatched here and there um, so this had 265s on it a little bigger a little bubbly you know but um, I ended up making so much profit off that van didn't even matter so got the tires for free but uh, I got took the wheels off brought them up up the street and I uh, had them mounted and balanced and like I said, they're general grabbers, they're like brand new tires, whatever. 
got them on there all balanced and uh, started driving it. Certain speeds kind of felt like it had a unbalanced tire, you know, it's kind of weird. Um, so I went back, I drove back, you know, back and, and you know, the kid was cool that, that did it and stuff. and. I, you know, he was outside having a smoke, and I just pulled up and said, hey, you know, did these all balance up good? You know, did you find a bent wheel or, you know, anything like that? And he said, no, everything was great, and no problem balancing them. I said, okay. I said, I got a little bit of a shimmy, but... So, turns out that the other tires, being bigger, I think, were making up for that slight vibration that was just starting. And then I just happened to change the tires to a much harder rubber you know more plies and now that vibration is noticeable so I ended up um, pulling it in jacking it up one day after that and the first thing I did because I remember from before is I got under and I grabbed that axle and sure enough a little bit of play there so I got the same problem so um, to do the bearing, it, it's like, you need like three different pullers, and it's just, the, the bearing itself is expensive, like, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty much at this point, um, looking for, I'm hoping that I could, you know, that I get, um, a whole nother truck, or, you know, some, something for junk that I can take apart, and, uh, take the diff out because it's a pretty common one it's uh you know they they all fit from the you know yukons tahoes um suburbans and all the pickups you know gmc whatever they're all the same as long as it's 373 gears uh it's not bad to change out you know it's just there's not very many bolts to hold that thing in you can take the axles out and stuff like that but um something i could probably handle you know on the ground anyway but uh so there's a guy in town that stopped me one day and said you know you pick up junk cars and I said yeah and he said uh, I got an 01 Silverado that I'm looking you know and I said yep yep I'm interested in that he said you know he said you give me you know, a couple hundred bucks for it yep definitely would because I know that you know that's how much I would pay anyway but if I get that then I can get all the parts and uh, possibly even another LS engine to put, you know, in the corner or something. But uh, that's what I'm looking for right now for this. Um, we still, it's still driven daily. I mean, it doesn't bother anything. Uh, it's not really getting worse, um, but I imagine that it will eventually. Uh, took it on a couple of... Um, you know, two-hour rides um, to and from, and there's really no problem. It's just you kind of feel it at a certain speed, and it's sort of like I said, feels like a um, like an unbalanced tire or something like that. But uh, that's kind of what it needs right now. Other than that, um, fought a lot of window regulators put a lot of those in it, a lot of door handles, um, but these days, you know, the four-wheel drive works, it's electronic, um, had to change the uh, actuator one time, a couple years ago, no problem, very easy thing, um, so nothing really major, uh, the rocker panels uh, last year, what was it, uh, maybe two years ago now, um, they finally just poked right through, and uh, there was good sections missing, you know, so I ordered a couple of those slap-on, you know, uh, slip-on rocker panels, they were cheap, um, I cut out some of the rust, sprayed some of that shit in there to stop it, slapped them up there, couple self tappers welded the ends uh, I hit it with some uh, some of that rocker guard 
uh, black right on the bottom you can't even tell worked out perfect um, so you know past inspection it's got you know a couple of stickers on it since no problem cab corner was just starting to peek through I just kind of smudged it up a little with some stuff and sprayed some of that rocker guard over covered it up no problem the uh, once we got into Maine which that's all you see up here is these Silverados but they are rotted bad you know um, you're still there yeah see just as I looked at that it stopped I don't, I don't know how to set it so it just keeps going but anyway a lot of people see the truck and say, man, that thing is in pretty nice shape, you know, for up here, because everything's all rotted out. But uh, the uh, the running boards, you know, I had those running boards on it at one point. Those, you know, stepped on it, broke right off. I just ripped them off. You don't need those. Um, once we got up here, we were driving it, and... She's like, man, you know, what do you got in the bed? You know, something's rattling around in the bed back there. She always hated it when I left stuff like scrap or something in the back. But um, turned out to be the the shock um, on the driver's side. You know, that little bracket on the, uh, there's a cross member. It's a round tube that goes right across. And, you know, <clears throat> it holds the shocks and uh, I believe the fuel tank sort of hooks to it at one point but um, shock was just sitting there and you couldn't even tell the difference because the shocks were probably gone you know weren't doing nothing but uh, you couldn't even tell the, the difference so um, I just took that bottom bolt out problem fixed no shock uh, no more noise she was happy with it, but uh, that cross member obviously needs some work. Um, it's probably at this point the whole thing's probably gonna have to be cut out and uh, replaced. A lot of guys do them; they just use like a piece of uh, like that pipe that I used on the dually exhaust would be would work good, um, like a three-inch, you know, three-inch exhaust pipe type thing slap it up in there but you know it's a bit of a project you gotta take a lot of stuff you know you got that fuel tank in the way and uh, you're gonna be welding and stuff like that so it is a bit of a project that you know I don't really uh, want to get into so that's like that and the thing doesn't haul a lot of stuff and like I said um, I actually towed cars with it without that shock on there and you couldn't even tell um, so not too worried about it um, but it usually you know for the most part now it just um, you know it is is retired from hauling stuff uh, and uh, it just sort of gets babied you know even though with uh, with 242,000 miles you still slap this thing to the floor and it'll light up both rear tires and put you back in your seat you know which is crazy but still runs great um, never have to use the four-wheel drive when you're driving the only the only thing is like if you want to get out of the driveway just press the button pull out back in two you're all set um, oh yeah I kept it I, I liked it quiet you know because everything I always had was loud and I kind of thought it was funny how quiet the fucking thing was um, but she wanted a little sound out of it so the cheapest easiest thing was just uh, cut the muffler out and uh, put a cherry bomb in there I did that a while ago uh, it's still in good shape it sounds good it's got a nice little growl to it but it's not too loud um, still has the factory cats on it I haven't cut those off but I know how much they're worth and they're there if I need the money but nah. I wouldn't do that because uh, you know being at the front pipe you know you cut them off and now you gotta try to weld some pipe in there and you're never gonna get all around with the welder 
so you're gonna have little leaks up there and you know how you know how I feel about exhaust leaks so a lot of these things um, would lose the bolts and the manifolds and they'd have exhaust leaks up there and I was always happy that this never did that and uh, it's still still pretty quiet as far as that goes um, when I got it in 2014 I was told uh, that it was due for a tune-up plugs wires never touched it I've never touched one thing all I've done is change the oil stuff like that you know um, you know the Oh, the, the rear end cover rotted through. I think actually it did a couple times throughout its life, but had to replace that. Can't really think of uh, anything else, you know, just little things, but. Well, it's Sunday night. Um, just got dark. It's about that time. I head in, think about something for dinner. But uh, did a few things. Keep the wife off my back. Nah, she doesn't really get on my back, but I do like to, uh, you know, complete little projects and stuff that, you know, it makes her happy. She still loves the truck she still gets in it smiles likes driving it and uh, I'd have to say out of a lot of stuff that I bought over the years a lot of vehicles um, this is definitely up there and one of the best deals I ever made um, really glad that you know that day I made the decision to buy this because uh, you know 1500 bucks and uh, here we are but anyway <clears throat> you enjoyed the other backstory hope you enjoyed this one and uh, I know you want you know to hear about the other other vehicles and uh, I figured maybe do one you know you weren't expecting to hear about or maybe you didn't even know it was still around but uh, I notice sometimes, you know, people comment, and uh, I do recognize, you know, the ones of you that, uh, you know, you've been watching for years, um, and I, I recognize the names, and I know who you are, and uh, it surprises me um, sometimes, you know, when you, you ask, like, like uh, the other the video of the Dooley, I think someone asked, like, where's the Suburban, like, you know, is it gone? And it's like, you know, I'm not going to follow you, but, you know, follow along. Yeah, the Suburban's still here. Suburban ain't going nowhere. But, um, on the, I explained before on the harsh road conditions up here, um, and with the Suburban, you know, driving through, being a daily driver for years and, uh, driving through the stuff, you know, the shit on the roads and everything, uh, that's that's parked for the winter that don't get driven in the winter so um, I took it right off the road and uh, just sitting in the back so it's better off you know better off being covered in snow than being driven around in the shit you know with all the salt and rotting it out so um, that's where we're at on that but uh, as far as this uh, Silverado goes at this point this truck owes us absolutely nothing. We uh, we thought after you know moving and this truck all the rides 
we thought that was it. We thought, you know, my wife said that she expected that uh, we pulled in the driveway of our new place and, you know, shut the key off and poof, and it goes up in smoke and never starts again. And uh, it's kind of funny, but, uh, you know, that's kind of what I expected to uh, You know, I expected it to um, be pretty close to at the end of its life, but uh, we're still going, and uh, I try to patch it up, keep it going the best I can, you know, uh, on the budget too, you know. So at this point, we're, we're, we're trying to see how many miles can we get out of this thing, you know. I'm just going to keep going. That's it. So... It's still there. Still watching. I knew you would. Yep, I knew it all along. Thanks for listening. Until next time. See you on the streets.